Hi friend, it is the 3rd of August and our topic for today is cleaning your machine. I'm going to tell you about this, a few other things today. I'm Pat Sloan. All right, let's talk about cleaning that machine. I know a lot of us are quite good and quite diligent. You might clean your machine every single time you use it. You might clean it, um, you know, maybe you do a once a week schedule and then some of us um, might clean it once the stitches don't look too good or there might actually be dust in the stitches. You can see lint and you open up all your machine and you've got this thick cake of uh, cake down fuzz and stuff. Okay, so we don't want to get to that point. That's not good for your stitches or your machine. Uh, so today is clean your machine day. And I want to show you a couple different tools. Um, this is one that Greg has given me to use because in the Solaris and a couple of my other machines, there are is automatic needle threader and different places that are kind of up in there and I can't get to them easily and I don't want to bend the little wires that do the automatic needle threading. So this is something photographers use and it's a, a bulb and when you blow it, there's air. So it's like a manual little vacuum thing. And I'll link you below to where you can get them. They're super simple. You just do this and you can blow the dust out of those places that you can't quite get to. Yes, yes, for simple, awesome devices. The other thing that I love and I've been using for a while are these little kits, um, the Oh So Clean kits. They come in pink and I'll show you the aqua one then. So here's a pink one, it's got two different brushes and then like a cleaner for, you know, a lot of us have a panel, like I have the panel on here and I need to get my fingerprints off of it and heaven forbid you were eating a snack and you got something on the screen. I know, I know that wouldn't be me. My friend might have done that. <laughs> so there's a little aqua brush and these are super soft uh, and very good for cleaning, cleaning your machine. So that is, that is your project for today, your topic, clean the machine. I'd love to hear if you're actually one of those people who has a schedule or some sort of way that you really do it. I mean, I, I know lots of people are really diligent, but then again, there's a whole crew that are not. So there you go. Okay, today is the Jolly Bar Sampler, and we are on the last block for our sampler. And my, I'm going to show you here. So my sampler is actually assembled. My friend Monica came and got all the blocks and assembled it for me. So here is the butterfly row. I just love, this is the canning jar fabric and so it has this great stripe and I love it in there. So there's that butterfly and I'll flip it over. Here's the other butterfly. So next week we'll be assembling all of this and I'm going to show you the backing that I'm going to use and then I think this one is going to go to the spa to be done because I am going to use minky on the back and I really do not prefer quilting that myself. The minky is that very soft plush backing which is amazing and cuddly and makes your quilts incredible. Uh, but I don't really care for quilting it myself because it's a little, um, it doesn't move as smooth. So, and plus I won't be quilting anything for quite a few weeks. So. I think I'd like to have it done. So that was that one. Yay! And uh, it's the, the sampler has been so fun. The Jolly Bar book has a lot of other quilts in it. Um, I'm probably going to get some of my Jolly Bars out once I can sew again and make up a few, you know, just to have as gifts. Um, they're great baby sizes. So we'll, you'll be seeing that. And I'm at, okay, I forgot to say, if you didn't print your calendar, be sure to go and get that for the month because it has all the sew alongs on here and special dates that I know about. Everything I knew about when I did the calendar is listed. So you want to be sure you have that. All right. I have the sew sampler box next because you know, I like to open that here and see it for the first time. Uh, and I don't peek. I also don't look when they announce it. I don't peek there. I don't do any peeking because I like to have it here and show to everybody. Now the Sew Sampler box is from the Fat Quarter Shop. Let's see if I can hold it a little bit. So that's what it looks like. It's a subscription uh, and you, if you don't are not a subscriber and you were you know, looking for that, you can 
um, get a notice when they have openings because they only make so many boxes. But the thing is, most of the items in the box are, are not exclusive. There's just a couple. So when we look at it, they're just new things, fun things to play with, and I'll get to show you what's in there. And I never know. They always have a theme, and you know I love a theme. A theme, a theme, a theme. Give me a theme. So, whoops. So this is, oh, cute. Okay, we're going to come down here. It is Patio Picnic. So going on a picnic, this is just perfect for us, right? Perfect for me, going on a picnic. Now, they, this is the start of, no, the, we've already started the, the new series. They do a series like that for a year, and then they sort of change things up. So they're always on the back, which I can't show you, but you always get extra discount, which is on the back side here. They tell you the extra discount for the month, so that's nice. This month, they gave you an extra discount and a code for Jolly Bars. Ooh, and guess what? We, I mean, I'm sorry, not jelly bars, jelly rolls, jelly rolls. That's what this is. So there's a mini jelly roll, I think, which is a smaller size. And that those are pretty colors. Look at that. Pe like gray and peaches and aqua and pops of yellow. So this is a Riley Blake one. And I'm trying to find the name of it. Shades of Summer. Oh, perfect. Shades of Summer for the patio picnic. They always give you a little booklet that tells you everything that comes in it. And so that is good. Now, what else is in here do we have? Oh, look at this. Somebody was asking about these pins. See these pins? These, no, I don't know. I can't get this open right now. They've got it taped shut. But let me see if I can put them down here. Okay, these, whoops, there you go. These pins have a firmer top on them, and I believe they are heat resistant. I think that's the ones that I was just looking them up for somebody. So these are heat resistant pins. Uh, oh, there's a little bag. I dumped it out of its bag. What else do we have in here? They give you a pattern for the jelly roll, and that is just for the box. Um, oh, here's about the pins. Okay, there's a sheet. Wait, let's look at that. I don't have quite the mobility here. All right, so here are there. They're magic pins. It's a sampler pack, uh, and there are these are the different pins that will be in there in a the little sampler pack. So that's really cool because you get to try the different sizes and. There's even the tea pins for those of you who like tea pins. Okay, then there's uh, uh, some triangles on a roll, which is for the pattern to use the jelly roll. And here is the pattern. This is exclusive to the box, the pattern. Then the last thing we have is Yugo's Amazing Tape, self-adhering, self-adhering reusable tape. All right. So it's reusable, no residue, so that'd be sort of like a duct tape, but it's a lot thinner, which is nice. Uh, what does it tell the width of it? Yes, it's a half an inch wide, says in the bottom there. So this would be good for marking your quilts. Um, it's washable, water resistant, adheres to itself, used to hold or bind for all kinds of things. Oh, you can also do it for, I think, um, your cross stitch, like putting, like I think they might, I might use this, I have to look in the little booklet here but it might be used to do your cross stitch and finish it off and tape it to some board. Um, let me see if it tells me real quick. I'm sure it's in here, I'm just not finding it fast enough. But I will look that up. Yo, know, there it is. Yeah, so you can be, yeah, you, so you can just put it, you can tape it against anything. All right, all right, there we go. <laughs> I like, I like the triangles on roll. Have you tried those? They are really fun. So if you've never tried them, they're a good thing to play around with. All right, I wanted to show you the, and talk to you about the uh, Little Wishes stars. So for the month of August, if you want to do a scrap busting quilt, these are amazing, you know, they're 12 inch finished stars. Now somebody wrote to me that said, oh, I don't have enough lights to do scrappy lights. You know, I don't have that much kind of fabric. Well, you don't, you, you're in luck. You don't need that. What you could do is just make your, all your background dark. So maybe you want to have like, I'll just put this like this. So maybe you want like all the background squares as um, blue. Maybe they would be navy. All the background would be navy. And then you could take yellow star points 
and maybe you would do navy in the middle. So be like, you know, or maybe in the middle you would do orange and yellow star points and navy on the back or green, green in here uh, with green star, light green star points and then navy background. So if you don't have a lot of lights, you could actually, uh, if you don't have some lights, you could make light stars against a navy background um, and then just do scrappy in the middle. Your big thing, like I said last uh, last video, was you want these star points to be really high contrast to whatever it is in the background because you don't want them to mush out and disappear. That is a huge problem with anything that's scrappy when you're trying to play with brown with it. Um, if you lose the image, then it just looks like mush and that's where a lot of people are not as keen on it. Some people love that look, but if you feel like it gets too mushy, then be sure your star points are really crisp. Now you can see the darker black with the bigger dots is more crisp than the other star points. And I switched out the cornerstones on this. What do you think? I did the, I did some aqua. I went digging in a box and I got some very tonal aquas. Um, there's only going to be one more row. I'm not sure I'll have, I, I don't know what I'm going to do border wise. Um, but there's some aqua and I like those. I like them better than the black, which just seemed to be kind of like, didn't have any life to it. And the red were just not popping. But uh, some, one of our friends mentioned trying aqua and I like them. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Okay, I can't wait to see uh, what you've been doing with your Jolly um, Bar sampler. Also, if you have not seen my in my group, Quill Along with Pat Sloan at Facebook, the Jelly Snowflakes, oh my goodness. There are so many Jelly Snowflakes. They are just beautiful. It's easiest to see the photos. You can just come to the group and scroll, but if you come to the group and hit the photo tab, you know, there's a little photo tab. Then you can just, you know, see all the images people shared. And that way you pick up the snowflakes, you know, pretty easily. You'll see them. They are beautiful. And we will run the jelly snowflake again in late September. So I will, um, you know, keep talking about that. But you'll need a jelly roll and some background fabric. And I'll have the link below here to these, um, the, the project page for this. So you can download your supply list and go order so you have it. So we'll, we'll do that in late September for four, for five weeks, you know, four, four weeks to make the parts and then the fifth week to finish it up. And some people then, you know, added borders to make it bigger or, you know, finish it up so you can use it this year. Yes. It's not that big. You can quilt it yourself. It'll be awesome. All right, my friend, <laughs> thank you so much. I love seeing your work and hearing about your project. So keep it up, keep talking, keep chatting, and I will see you online. I love you. Mwah.